Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Peter Denby. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer of a business called Hyperfinity. Uh, this is my colleague, Adam Barracliffe, our Chief Data Officer. So I want to start the presentation off with a question. Um, so we primarily work with retailers. Uh, and the thing that I love about working with retailers is that it's an industry that we all understand to at least to some extent. And we all understand it because we're all uh, customers of retailers. We all shop in stores and we shop online. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a, an industry that you can easily get your head around. And I think because of that, we all understand some of the challenges that retailers are experiencing at the moment. But um, question for you guys, who do you think has the hardest job in a retail business? What job role do you think has the hardest job? And I'm looking out for people that I know, Rob. Who do you think has the hardest job in, in a retailer's business? When I was in it, me. <laughs> Doing what? Doing data. Doing data, okay. Okay, anybody else who thinks someone in a retail business has got a particularly difficult job? Okay. Well, it could be the chief executive. The book stops with the chief exec, so they've got a pretty tough job. It could be a humble shop floor assistant. They've got a tough job as well. They've got to make sure that um, you know, shoppers are uh, catered for and making sure the shop kind of runs uh, effectively. But for us, the hardest job in a retail business is that of the chief customer officer. Um, a chief customer officer has a thankless task at the best of times. The average tenure for a chief customer officer is pretty short, to be honest. But think about the environment that they're currently operating in. Um, we have an economic crisis. The cost of living is going up rapidly. So, so customers have got less money in their wallets to spend with retailers. We've had two and a half years of a global health pandemic. That's had a huge disruption on retail businesses. I mean, some businesses with physical stores literally couldn't sell through those stores for several months. And imagine in your own companies if you had to shut one of your main sales channels. Devastating for some retailers. And supply chains have been hugely disrupted as well. Very difficult for retailers to get products on the shelf when customers want to buy them. And then more generally speaking, our uh, expectations as consumers have risen dramatically. So we now expect the kind of experience that we get from Amazon or the speed of a Google search from any retailer or brand that we deal with. Perhaps unfairly, but those are our expectations. And the chief customer officer is expected to keep revenue coming into the company by acquiring uh, customers, retaining customers and growing customers. So they've got a really, really tough challenge. So you're probably asking, you know, what does a chief customer actually do? What are they responsible for? Well, in most forward-thinking retail businesses, um, customers are their north star, and delivering a great customer experience is the thing that they're really focused on. So any decision that touches a customer is really the responsibility of a chief customer officer. So what product should we sell to our customers? Who should we sell them to? Which groups of customers? How should we sell them? And how should we price our products so customers buy them? These are all... Uh, a set of commercial decisions that a retailer and a chief customer officer has to get right for the retailer to survive the current crisis and to thrive in the future. And this whole thing around successful commercial decision making is really, really important. It's not just our view. So Bain ran a 10-year survey and found that there's a really high correlation between decision effectiveness and uh, business success. However, McKinsey pointed out that only 20% of executives feel that their company, um, companies excel at decision making. So there's a huge gap. Decision making is getting more important and lots and lots of companies are really struggling to make fantastic commercial decisions. What exactly is required to make a great commercial decision? I mean, it's truth be told, lots of things, but um, key to making great commercial decisions and relevant to the audience here is the ability to analyze data at scale and then extract insight from that data. For example, a supermarket. A supermarket might identify a group of customers that they think that they can sell more products to and make more revenue and profit. So they would analyze the behavior and the needs of those customers. Um, they would look at uh, you know, what motivates them, which products they've got a strong affinity to, and perhaps their price sensitivity as well. They create some insight, and that insight would tell them what products they need to promote to those customers and what, how they need to price them to convert more browsers into buyers. So it's this kind of process of analytics uh, and insight that's really, really key to making great commercial decisions. 
which sounds dead easy, but you know, there are actually huge barriers that stand in the way of retailers doing this successfully. So to be able to uh, analyze data at scale requires a certain set of skills. I mean, typically you've got to be able to code and you've got to be able to have a mindset of extracting insight from data. And to people in this room, that might be second nature, but relatively speaking, very few people in the population are able to do that and have those skills. And there's a chronic shortage of data science and AI staff globally. The demand is getting higher rapidly uh, and the supply is nowhere near keeping up. A way to mitigate that would be to have accessible technology products for people who can't code. Um, and um, I think if truth be told, there are very few kind of truly no code tech products on the market for retailers to invest in. And most retail businesses, and you'll probably know this if you work for a retailer, um, they, they, they have um, silos of data all around the business, often don't have a unified view of data in their business. They make decisions in different parts of the company and create insight in different parts of the company. And what happens is that customers receive uh, largely irrelevant, disjointed experiences much of the time. And think of it from your own point of view as a customer. If you get those kind of experiences, the chances are you'll spend less money and you'll show less loyalty to that uh, retailer. And that means less revenue and profit for the retailer. So a chief customer officer has a really, really tough role, but, but we think help is at hand to solve this problem. Hi everyone, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, so yeah, I think we can be agreed that the uh, Chief Customer Officer has got a pretty tough job. Um, but uh, yeah, help is at hand. So let's explore the kind of tools that are uh, available to a Chief Customer Officer that might be able to solve some of the um, difficulties and, and decisions that they've got to tackle. Um, so I probably don't need to tell everybody in this room that AI is booming and uh, reshaping the world that we live in. Uh, and that's no different for uh, the retail landscape as well. Uh, so let's look at some of the challenges that Pete outlined and how AI and uh, data science and those kind of tools are helping uh, combat uh, and, and support decision making. So in terms of what products to sell, uh, so um, we might have uh, tools at our disposal such as optimization algorithms to help us know what a retailer should sell at all. We might have recommender systems that help us curate that range and put relevant products in front of the right kind of customers. We might have things like product attributes and customer need states mapped out that help, uh, help surface the right ranges to the right people uh, and to suit uh, niche needs of, of uh, various consumers. So who, who might uh, we sell those products to? Uh, we might take a look at our entire business and segment the customer base uh, and really learn what motivates those people uh, and how they should be treated differently. We might map out their customer lifetime value to really know what drives our business uh, and, and who's, you know, who, who is our core customer, how can we help them grow and develop with us and win mar more market share for that uh, consumer. And we might develop intelligent audiences uh, that help us hyper-target customers on their customer journey with the right kind of media, the right kind of offerings as well. So how, how might we sell that to them? So uh, AI can help us uh, understand people's channel preference and their propensity to shop via, via different channels uh, and how people like to be communicated with. It can help us with things like understanding promotional effectiveness. What are the triggers, what are the offers, uh, and what are the mechanisms that are really gonna drive uh, value for the retailer and resonate with us as, as consumers? And what prices should they charge? A pretty key one right now. Uh, so AI and data science uh, can help us understand how elastic product products are. So uh, where might, might we get increased demand uh, if, we, if we lower prices or likewise, where do we need to protect? We can look at customer incentive modeling. So uh, how do we provide uh, customers with relevant personal discounts that are gonna help drive relevance for them, uh, but increased uh, loyalty to, to, to a retailer? Uh, or things like mapping out the competition, so looking at share of choice modelling uh, across the com uh, competitive landscape uh, and helping a retailer make decisions there. So hopefully, um, you know, a lot of people in this room will be aware of all of those things uh, and it, it helps retailers really get to, the, to a level of great insight. Uh, but we feel like AI alone isn't enough to make really, really smart decisions. 
Uh, and there's a few barriers and a few pitfalls, a few reasons why uh, we believe that is. Uh, so we think that AI often exists in silos. So you might develop a fantastic algorithm that helps the marketing department. And actually that tool, that algorithm could be leveraged across the entire business. But in large organizations, that that's quite often gets lost and gets siloed in, into a, a corner of the business. It's also normally quite poorly understood by actual decision makers. It's really well understood by the people who created it, the data scientists that have slaved on that solution. Uh, but actually, when they put it in the hands of people who make decisions day to day, uh, they, they lose some traction there. So how, how can we help? Uh, the decision makers actually really, really understand how to leverage it to its maximum extent. Uh, and also, we, we see a lot of uh, AI tools, AI algorithms that have been developed not actually make it to production. They sit there as a flash in a pan data science exercise that's really, really insightful for that moment in time, but fails to get embedded into a business, make it to production, embed itself in the tools that people use to make day-to-day -day decisions. As soon as it's built, uh, it starts aging. So it, we've got to get those tools into production, into decisions that are made uh, regularly. So on to our next really useful tool, BI. Uh, so BI, uh, conversely to AI, has been around almost forever, you know, 20, 30 years, even longer. Um, and uh, I think in the last decade, it's really become um, ubiquitous for, for every industry to have more BI than you actually need, you know, more BI than you can shake a stick at. Uh, and whilst it's a fantastic tool, um, uh, uh, it's easy to see how a chief uh, commercial officer can get a lot of value from that, understanding the latest KPIs. It's normally in production, so you see the latest data, uh, uh, and that helps you make smart decisions. Now, however, in a sim similar to AI, we feel that it does stop short of uh, you, you know, reaching that absolute gold standard of, of decision making. And there's a few reasons and pitfalls for that as well. So BI tends to look back at history and tell you how things have worked in the past. And it normally stops short of um, that prescriptive analytics piece, getting into the realms of recommendation and simulation and what's going to happen if you make certain decisions. So there's a bit of a barrier there. Uh, as I've alluded to as well, uh, BI has absolutely boomed. There's probably too much of it. So I think um, a, lot of, um, a lot of the solution at the moment is to chuck more and more data into dashboards, add in every slice of every bit of information you might ever want. And I think a lot of businesses are actually suffering from uh, paralysis by analysis. And really it's a bit of a way to procrastinate on making the tough decisions that will actually drive uh, a business forward uh, and a retailer. So how do we simplify that? Uh, and then uh, finally, um, sorry. Uh, yeah, fi finally, um, BI uh, tends to stop short of actually letting you take the action that you want to take in that platform. So you can consume information, but you can't actually action it. So that might be, you'd like to select the right audience, the right customer segment that you want to uh, send your marketing campaign to. Great, you might be able to go to BI to understand that, but you can't actually action it and activate it there. So that, again, there's a barrier for the decision maker in that they've got to consume in one system and turn to another to actually activate that. So what's the solution? How do we leverage those for what they are and uh, you know, the amazing benefits that they provide? Uh, but how do we take it to that next level and avoid those pitfalls? So enter decision intelligence. Uh, so at Hypefinity, we think we've cracked the code, solved the chief commercial officer's every problem uh, with this algorithm equation that maybe Pythagoras would be proud of himself. So AI plus BI equals DI. Uh, so what do we mean by that? So DI, decision intelligence, really aims to take the best of both of those things the intelligence of AI, all the benefits that we can get there uh, through understanding your customers, through creating forecasts, predictions and simulations, and actually having them in production and having them embedded into the workflow of a decision maker in a BI-like tool that lets them interact with that, 
uh, in a simple way, not that uh, overwhelming amount of information, very, very focused on making a specific decision. So decision intelligence tries to make the complex simple. Uh, so here we, we need to start with a clear business problem. Uh, so it's uh, a decision maker on the front line of decision making. They know what they want to achieve. Uh, they need to bring that problem to people like us, people like us in this room. Um, and to understand that decision really, really well uh, and articulate a, a clear and simple uh, business objective. And then uh, they input their parameters. They decide what factors matter to their decision that they're making. They want to plug this into uh, decision intelligence. Uh, and then this is where really the AI kicks in. All of that information that's prepared in the background, how do we leverage that? And the complex stuff that goes on to turn those inputs uh, into intelligence and recommendation. Uh, and that's the massive squiggle. Uh, that's, that's the stuff that I guess we all do in, in this room, uh, that, that complex piece. But at the end of it, uh, we need to bring it back to a really simple recommendation. Uh, so that's got to be visual. It's got to take all that complexity and really distill it into the essence uh, of what matters to make that decision. Uh, it's got to be visual and easily to un uh, easy to understand. Uh, and here as well, we've also got to have the element of um, the, the human having input. So we want decision intelligence to make recommendations, to be prescriptive about the action to take. Uh, but we don't want it to be a black box solution where users are railroaded into making decisions that only the AI has come up with. So it's how can we integrate the best of uh, AI and the, the data that we've produced there alongside human uh, decision making. And we need to provide them that simple action, which might be, okay, I'm gonna promote this price, I'm gonna uh, put this um, product on clearance, I'm gonna target this audience, and then actually provide them that connectivity to downstream platforms to make that a reality, so that we don't ever come out of their workflow. They're doing their day-to-day -day job. So let's take an example of that. So let's say we're sat with uh, a trader or a merchandiser working in their category, and they've received the challenge that they need to improve their margin percentage and improve their sell-through at the same time. Uh, they might come to an analytics team, you know, people in this room, and I think as an analyst myself, and uh, analysts in the room might, uh, might empathise. Our natural tendency might be to gather, go and gather all of the data, produce all of the metrics, uh, create the KPIs, create the models that we think are going to make a difference, create all this vast array of intelligence and take it back to our stakeholders and say, here you go, and blow their minds with actually what, what, you've, uh, what you've produced. But quite often that ends up with uh, overwhelm. These are people who want to be informed about their decisions in a simple way, and we've not made it simple for them in that instance. So within decision intelligence as well, frameworks are a really great way to, great tool to deploy to actually add that element of simplicity. So let's come back to that challenge, improving margin and improving sell through. So we might take all of that complexity, all of that squiggle that we've got in the middle, and turn it into a simple framework of recommendations and actions to take on each product. And here, if you can read at the back, uh, we've got a simple framework to say, let's, let's measure your product's price elasticity, but also how well stocked they are, how, how well are they selling through at the moment. And if they're in the elastic category and they're overstocked, great. This is the category of product that you need to promote and that you're gonna get uh, commercial rewards for doing so. If they're inelastic and they're understocked, Great, these are prices that you can actually inflate safely without impacting customer perception too much. So that's how frameworks can be embedded into these decision intelligence tools to help make uh, easy decisions. So as a business, Hyperfinity, that, that is our mission. That's what we're all, all about. Um, we want to embed AI into BI-like tools to help make uh, retailers make better decisions. So yeah, our mission is to uh, help make uh, intelligent decisions simple. So what is Hyperfinity? What is our platform? So we see it as a distillation of all of our ideas and experience uh, working with retailers and trying to create um, AI, BI, and decision intelligence tools in the past. So it acts as a single uh, layer, a single intelligence layer for a retailer 
uh, to, to help make those decisions. And there's really two aspects to it. There's the intelligence part and there's, and there's the action part. So to talk about intelligence for a while. So what we mean here really is the foundational data assets, the real understanding that you need to create or a retailer needs to create to be able to make smart decisions. It's, it's the, it underpins everything to follow. So what might we mean by that? Uh, well, it's that understanding of your customer and your products through things like segmentations, through customer lifetime value, through to product attributes uh, and mapping out customer need states. And it's that uh, real understanding of all of the relationships between different products uh, and customers and, and every interaction that they might have uh, in, in that arena. So our belief is that Hyperfinity can stand up that massive list of uh, data assets quicker than any other product on the market, but also quicker than internal teams uh, could if you've got an array of data scientists. And then we move into action. So with that foundational data in place, how do we then go about actually optimizing decisions across a retail organization? Uh, so here we work in uh, a full sphere of, of retail uh, across marketing, media, pricing, ranging, and assortment uh, through to supply chain. And all of those things uh, need those foundational data assets to really flourish, but they also need what we've described, really easy to use front-end tools that embed that AI at their fingertips, uh, democratizing the access to AI and data science, but also embedded in these easy to use uh, frameworks, ultimately uh, that help them make uh, a better decision, but also make them feel in control of those decisions, help them use their human experience, all the years that they've worked in their business as a trader or as a category leader or a marketer, how can they distill their experience into that platform as well? make smart decisions and then send them to the right place. So if you're thinking that that might be supported by some pretty serious architecture under the hood, you'd be right. Uh, so Snowflake uh, is uh, one of our partners uh, and really plays an enormous part uh, in powering our product. So Snowflake is the, it, it's the engine room. It's the place where we do all of the heavy lifting, uh, whether that's ingesting and processing billion ro billions of rows of transactional customer or browsing data, or whether that's running collaborative filtering al algorithms at scale and at pace. And it does it all at blazing fast speed, always scaling to our needs. Snowflake also slots into our serverless architecture, uh, letting us uh, communicate easily to our front end and to exposing these uh, AI tools to our end users capturing their inputs, but also writing that back to Snowflake through the uh, REST SQL API. We also make use of advanced Snowflake features uh, like Snowpark, which allows us to code natively, uh, and code Python uh, natively within Snowflake, uh, uh, opening up lots of um, access to machine learning libraries and helping us do data science at scale. And finally, it does all that uh, whilst uh, underpinning all, all, all of this really by Snowflake's data sharing capabilities and its security credentials, meaning that we can work safely in security and give our customers peace of mind whilst they're on their journey towards better decision intelligence. Okay, so we, so we really think we're onto something here. Uh, lowering the bar for retailers to use data science and AI to make great commercial decisions. And that um, thought process was validated by Snowflake, really. We entered our startup of the year competition in 2022, along with over a thousand other companies, and made it right through to the final, the final three. Um, we were the only company from the UK, from Europe, and even from EMEA to make it into the final. And fortunately, we didn't quite win the top spot, but we, uh, we made a place on the podium. And I think that just has given us a lot of confidence that there's a real market need um, for the platform that we've developed and really um, democratizing access to data science and AI for retail businesses. And really to uh, Adam's point, we've helped across several use cases within retail businesses. So we're helping clients in the retail media space. Retail media is, is um, an area that's uh, undergoing explosive growth at the moment. And this is all about understanding customer behavior and needs, and then building intelligent audiences for retailers to be able to activate in-store um, on digital screens and via their digital 
uh, platforms, websites and apps for sponsored listings, display advertising, etc. And not surprisingly, lots of our clients have come to us over recent times to ask for help with decision intelligence in the pricing area as cost prices increase and customers have less money to spend at retailers. Um, a lot of our clients want to be sure that they're pricing their products at the right level so they can maximise profit margin, but also they can win customers that might defect to uh, a competitor. So sometimes they need to be more, slightly more um, competitive on their pricing. So we're seeing a lot of interest in those kind of areas. So in summary, retailers are facing some really serious headwinds that we all know about at the moment. Uh, we truly believe that decision intelligence offers the opportunity to optimise commercial decision making to deliver great experience, customer experiences and to really maximise revenue and profit and that's something that retailers need to do to survive the current storm and then to thrive into the future. So thank you for listening uh, and we'd be pleased to take a few questions before our time's up.